Okay, I know you just clicked on this and you expect the show to start, but before it does, uh, let's just uh, let's just get one thing straight. Get the kids out of the room. I don't want to be responsible for anything that the kids may pick up that I may say during the course of this program. I mean, I'm not here to hurt people. Get them out of the room. Go on, get them out. Send them off to school. Isn't school supposed to be starting? Shouldn't they be in school? Get them out of here. Okay. Are we alone now? All right. All right. Let's do this. On the air everywhere, this is New England Broadcasting. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good night. It's the Ron Van Dam Show. Hold on tight. Things can get a bit weird. If you like that sort of thing. You know it's really sad? You go shopping for shoes for your child because your child's going back to school. And you find that you can only afford the left shoe. You can't buy the right shoe. Just the left shoe because of these damn Chinese tariffs. My God. You know, they say that uh, a child going to school is is to educate them, not to not to be a babysitting service. Au contraire, that's exactly what you are, <laughs> and that's and I love it. I mean, don't even send them home for lunch. Feed them there. I mean, just you, you, you know, my God, seriously, teachers? No, babysitters. Come on. Next time a teacher says, I'm going to send a note home to your parents, give the note to yourself. You're the parent. You're, you're there. You just adopted that kid. I mean, just imagine your this teacher is yelling at your kid for being a, a, a little asshole in, in, in the class while you're sitting in a bar sipping on a margarita. I mean... <laughs> Come on. That's fantastic. Hey, we pay enough in taxes. Might as well have babysitting thrown in. You know, come on. What the hell? Throw a little education in there. Teach them something while you're babysitting them. It's a win-win. All right, fine. Obviously, that's not everybody's opinion on education. <laughs> you know, I've said this so many times before, I'm getting sick of saying it. <laughs> We're focusing on the wrong kind of education. <laughs> Your child doesn't need to learn English or history or math. No, they need to learn how to be decent people, how to stop being little annoying things. Teach them how to be an adult. Teach them how to live in an adult world with bills and invoices and lawsuits and investing and trying to keep a job, dressing appropriately so your pants aren't down at your knees, um, how to pronounce words, how to use words that don't begin with an F. I mean, that's what school should be. How to eat with a fork. How about that? Well, your parents should be teaching you that. No, parents don't know how to do it either. No, that's what schools are for. Teach them morals. Teach them how to get along. How to how to be proper. What you know what what the laws are. I mean, teach them that stuff. Not not English. Hey, if a kid's gonna read, kid's gonna read. Come on, kid's gonna write. Kid's gonna write. I mean, you can't teach them that stuff. Penmanship. There's no such thing. You wasted like. 20 years of my life. Yeah, I spent 20 years in first grade. Well, I got comfortable. What can I tell you? <sighs> History? <laughs> most, most people are telling me, Ron, don't live in the past. Look forward. Don't look behind you. Move on. 
what are we teaching kids history for then? What's the point of that? Math? Why would you bother teaching a kid math when they have calculators? They've been around for a long time. Now there's cell phones with calculators as an app. It comes standard with the phone. It's the only thing that does. Kid doesn't need that. You got a cell phone. Why educate a kid at all when they can Google everything they're curious about? What's the point? What's the point? Okay, that was fun, wasn't it? (laughs) How you doing? Welcome to the program. This is what you're in for. (laughs) Hey, you clicked on it. I didn't force. Did I take your hand? Did I take your hand to make you click on this thing? Did I grab your mouse? That sounds wrong, doesn't it? He grabbed my mouse. Oh, my God. Have him indicted. I didn't make you do this. All right, welcome to the program. Uh, Oh, my God. I I was watching TV yesterday, and uh, there was a commercial for chicken. Uh, It was a fried chicken place. And I said to myself, my God, if I come back as an animal in my next life, Not that I'm going to have another one, uh, uh, but if I did, please don't make it a chicken. Oh, my God, it's the worst thing to be on the planet is a chicken. For some reason, humans eat chickens exclusively. We eat chickens in every single form, in every single part of the damn animal we eat. Every part. And it's marketed accordingly. We eat chicken all the time. Everything's chicken, chicken, chicken. Things that aren't even chicken apparently taste like chicken. What a horrible animal to be. You're doomed. If you're a chicken, man, you're doomed. You are. People who are on diets, they're told by their doctors, don't eat red meat, eat chicken. These chickens, man, if, if you're a chicken right now listening to the program, Pack a suitcase and get out of town. They're after you. And not only is it ba- and, and we'll eat you in any form, any form. We'll, we'll saute you. We love to fry you. We love to bread you and, th- and fry you. We'll put you on a, on a, on a pole, on a spit, and we'll, we'll, we'll make you rotate like a rotisserie. That's, we'll even do that to you. That, that's crucifixion as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we'll, We'll bake you. We'll roast you any way we can. We won't eat you raw. Not yet. Someday. Not right now. And my God, as if that weren't bad. And we treat you horribly. We put you in cages. And even those of you that are cage free, you know, that's not what it is. Cage free means you have room to lie down doesn't mean that you're out of the cage. Well, I don't see chickens going to Walmart uh, buying antacid pills. They're not free. It's not like, okay, you're free to leave the cage. Have a nice life. Get out of here. No, you're still still branded for death. Come on. As if that weren't bad enough. And my God, it is. We actually take your young, unborn children... And we eat them with ham. Oh, my God. We eat eggs. We eat their unborn children. I know this sounds very cruel, but it's what we do. If we're not eating you for dinner, we'll eat your unborn children for breakfast. (gasps) This sounds awful, Ron. I know. I'm just saying. We apparently don't think chickens are very sacred. <laughs> no place on the globe is a chicken sacred. Ooh. We even have phrases about the chickens. Or you're you're crazy. Uh you're you're just you're crazy busy all the time. You're running around like a chicken without a head. Wow. What a horrible example that is. <laughs> a chicken without a head running around what kind of what kind of sick sick illustration is that these poor chickens man 
Poor, poor chickens. They can't win no matter which way they turn. Don't ever make me a chicken. Ever. I get sick of chickens sometimes because chicken's everywhere. Everything. You go to a restaurant, you open up the menu, nine out of ten entrees are chicken, some type of chicken. The the Chinese uh, even have a, uh, well, they have tons of, they have sesame chicken, they have uh, General Gao's chicken. I don't know this general, apparently he was in some kind of battle with chickens. They even have a thing called strange flavor chicken. Yes, they do. You've seen it on the menu. I don't know what the hell that is. Why in the world would I, on purpose, order a chicken that has a strange flavor to it? Or, excuse me, I ordered the chicken. It tastes really strange. Oh, yeah. That's a strange flavor chicken. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's like, wow. That's so honest. You can't ever send that dish back. Well, you ordered it strange. You can't return it. I don't know what it is. I don't know what's wrong with the chicken. It's got a strange flavor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We try. <laughs> wow. Oh, chicken, man. All right. Question is, how long am I going to go on with this chicken bit? It's significant. It's it, There's a lot of material here. So I'm milking this sucker dry. That's the one thing you can't do to a chicken. You can't milk it. If you could, there'd be chicken milk for sure. As long as you're going to eat its eggs and its entire body, let's milk it for all it's worth. Hey, there's almond milk. Do you know how hard it is to milk an almond? I don't even know where the tits are. All right. Apparently, uh, now I'm going a little too far. There's, there's no question I've gone too far. All right, I will. Well, welcome to the program. We have a great guest coming up later in the show. Do you own a pet? Own, that sounds so wrong. Do you have a pet living in the house with you that you take care of? We're going to speak to a uh, very well-known veterinarian about some of your dog's habits. Why do they lick you so much? Why do they lick themselves why do they scratch all the time? What the hell's wrong? If human beings scratch themselves all the time, they'd be quarantined. If I could lick myself, I wouldn't ever, ever have gotten married. So, um, I don't know what that means either, by the way, but that's why I asked the children to leave the room. Can you imagine if you could bend over and lick yourself? Oh, my God. No one would ever leave the house. Why would you? Hey, you want to go to a movie? Uh, no. I'm licking myself. Hello. That's a lot more pleasurable than seeing one of your stupid movies. Unless I can lick myself in the movie, then maybe we'll talk. Oh, come on. So we're going to speak to a veterinarian about that later. Well, not exactly about that, but not about human beings wishing they could lick themselves and not that, but about dogs and why they do what they do. I'm sure you'll find it fascinating. I'm projecting that you will. I don't know that you will, but I'm hoping that you will because it will be an interview that I will be doing in front of your face and it would be really nice of you to listen to it. So that's coming up very shortly. The shorter I get, the closer it is to the time when I will interview the veterinarian. <laughs> uh, this is so funny, I can't stand it. No, not the show. Yesterday, I was watching Jeopardy. I watched Jeopardy. Do you know why I watched Jeopardy? To be made a fool of, because I'm watching people that are far smarter than I am for entertainment. I don't know why that would be. Why would I do something like that? You're supposed to watch things that make you feel good about yourself. Like when you watch Dr. Phil or Jerry Springer, where they're showing you the misfits of the world, you feel good about yourself, don't you? That's why you do it. That's why you watch the Kardashians. They have a lot of money, but pathetic as hell. That's a life. That's, that's a life. You feel better about yourself when you watch these shows. 
but Jeopardy, I feel worse about myself. Like I'm an idiot. They're parading everybody that is smarter than me in front of my face. It's, it's very demeaning, but I think we like to be demeaned. (laughs) So March in Jeopardy, Alex Trebek comes out horrible what he's going through uh, physically. But I'm not talking about that. He comes out, uh, Alex Trebek is is painted to be uh, one of the smartest people in the world because he hosts Jeopardy. You know and I know he's got all the answers on a card in front of him. So, okay, that's like going to school and cheating on every single test. So that doesn't really impress me. But Alex Trebek comes out. And he's pronouncing everything perfectly. So you think he's smart because he pr- he's pronouncing stuff that couldn't possibly pronounce. I don't even know what the word is. And he's coming out with, uh, with even the, the accent involved. I mean, that seems to be quite smart even in that regard. The category is philosophers. And uh, one of the questions or one of the answers, I get so confused with this, you know, put everything in the form of a question. I mean, why are we playing games here? Here's the question. What's the answer? I mean, isn't that what we're doing here? We have to make it difficult by putting it in the form of a question. I mean, seriously, that's that's a little out of hand. So anyway, it's uh, it's about Socrates. You familiar with Socrates? If you went to school, you probably are. Do you know how to spell Socrates? Okay. So Alex Trebek is reading the thing, and he says, uh, Socrates uh, said the following uh, a thing, and he, he reads it. And he says, so says Socrates. And I'm thinking, Socrates? What the hell is Socrates? And then I realized Alex Trebek mispronounced Socrates. <laughs> oh, my God. It's, he's, he pronounced Socrates as Socrates. <laughs> I laughed for like six hours after that. For two reasons. One, because it's really funny. And secondly, Alex Trebek did that (laughs) by mistake. I thought, no, he must have been joking. No, he wasn't joking. He he misread it. He mispronounced it. (laughs) One of the greatest philosophers of our time. So, (laughs) crates. I still am in stitches about it. (sighs) I finally realized that Jeopardy is, is is not as bad as I thought as far as making me look stupid. <laughs> I snorted. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, I snorted. That's a, When somebody laughs and they snort, you know you said something really funny or something funny really, really happened. People can, uh, can fake laughing a lot, and we all do because, you know, it's just it's easier. But when you snort, that's an uncontrollable sound. That's like farting. Very few people do that uh, on purpose. Some do. Some very annoying people do that on purpose because they think it's really, really funny. It is if it's timed properly, but nobody knows how to do that. But if uh, mostly it just comes out of you because it has to and you don't expect it. Like when you bend down to pick something up off the floor and, and, and that comes out by mistake. You know, that's just so natural. I don't even know why I'm talking about that now. I'm going to have to listen to the, to the recording and see how I got into that subject matter. Anyway, our guest is coming up uh, rather shortly. So is my dinner. What are we going to have for dinner tonight? Hmm, chicken perhaps? Hmm. Maybe some form of chicken. Man, we're really into the fried chicken thing. Aren't we? There's a lot of fried chickens. KFC started this. We don't even say Kentucky Fried Chicken anymore. We don't even bother saying the whole name. I talked about this yesterday. We shorten everything up because we just don't have time to say all this stuff. There's not enough time in the day. Even when the sunlight is like 14 hours long, you know, it's, it's not it. It's, we just don't have time. So we say KFC. Some people don't even say McDonald's. They say Mickey D's. I don't even understand where you got that from. Mickey D's? What is that? Like a, is that like a strip club or something? Yeah, if you really... Uh, Saturday night, I don't have any date, and I want to see women parade themselves in front of me. I'm going to go down to Mickey D's. I, I don't know. I don't know. 
<laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so uh, KFC, and then uh, you got Popeyes. Popeyes, that poor cartoon character now is being associated with fried chicken. I mean, it just doesn't stop. And now they have Chick-fil-A, which was a southern chain, and it moved north. I mean, this is like an invasion. This is like a civil war. Um, Chick-fil-A, uh, very, very popular, but not open on Sundays. Excuse me? Um, that's a weekend. That's when people love to eat fried chicken, but you're not open on Sundays. No, we're not. We're very, very religious. Um, we are not to, uh, on Sunday, we do not eat, uh, we do not do business. We do not, uh, engage in financial transactions with chickens. Um, oh, okay. That's sounds really good. Maybe if you're that religious, perhaps you shouldn't be in the fried chicken business because guess what? Your competitors are making out really good on Sundays <laughs> because the, the playing field has just opened up on Sundays. And I don't know about you, but a lot of people go out on Sundays, even to church. And when they come out of church, um, they go for fried chicken. So don't tell me that this is a religious situation. <laughs> It's because someone's not understanding something. Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A. Again, we're not chickens, we're chicks. We're, we're chicks. Want to go out and get a chick? I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Are you talking about going out and getting some chicken or picking up a female slut? What are you, what are you talking about? Which one? By the way, there are man sluts too. As a matter of fact, if you really think about it and look at it properly, men are really sluts. They're the ones that are. So let's not go calling people things. Let's not take groups of people and give them bad names. Donald Trump. <gasps> did I just work into that somehow? I think I did. All right. We got to do this. Let's talk about Donald's latest thing. I swear this won't take long. Hurricane Dorian uh, was headed for Puerto Rico. They got scared because they were devastated last time we even said the word hurricane. Remember that? That's when Donald Trump went to Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico had no power. Uh, everything was devastated. Uh, homes were completely destroyed. Uh, and Donald Trump. Donald Trump stands in front of residents who have lost their homes and throws out paper towels. Let me tell you something. Imagine you're in your home or apartment and it's totally flooded. Everything is ruined and soaking wet and full of vermin and disgusting swamp water. It's going to cost you millions of dollars and insurance money is not coming through. You're devastated. You have no power. Everything is soaking wet, and Donald Trump, the president, flips you a roll of paper towels. Thank you, Mr. President. Now the roll of paper towels will soak up all the four feet of water in my living room. Thanks, Donald. I mean, could you insult me more? Everything is flooded, and you give me a roll of paper towels? Good choice. Nice photo op, Don. So Donald Trump, who loves to tweet and pretty much just devastate his own personality for some reason, this is what he tweets just yesterday. He says, we are tracking, and I'm quoting, we are tracking closely Tropical Storm Dorian as it, as it heads, as usual, to Puerto Rico, that island that's in the way of all these hurricanes. Let's move it. Remember when Donald said uh, Puerto Rico is surrounded by water? It's an island surrounded by water. <sighs> Did you go to school or not? I can't tell. Again, uh, we are tracking closely Tropical Storm Dorian as it heads, as usual, to Puerto Rico. FEMA and all others are ready and will do a great job. When they do, let's let them know it. Give them a big thank you. Not like the last time. That includes the incompetent mayor of San Juan. He's, he's insulting San Juan. 
and, and all of Puerto Rico saying, we helped you and you never said thank you. Yeah, well, all right, thank you for the roll of paper towels. Appreciate it. Donald goes on to say, get this. Trump says, Puerto Rico is one of the worst and most corrupt places on earth. <gasps> what? Their political system is broken and their politicians are either incompetent or corrupt. Congress approved billions of dollars last time, more than any other place else has ever gotten. <laughs> and it is sent to crooked Pauls. No good. And by the way, this is what Donald says. I can't believe this. He says, and by the way, I'm the best thing that's ever happened to Puerto Rico. From that tweet alone, he should be committed and mentally examined and made sure that he never harms the public again. Donald, you think you're the best thing that happened to Puerto Rico, where in your tweet, you've quite obviously have <laughs> made yourself the worst thing that ever happened to Puerto Rico, except for the fact you threw him some rolls of paper towels. Unbelievable. And you wonder why I talk about this guy. Yeah, wonder no more. Our guest uh, comes up right after this. You are listening to The Ron Van Dam Show, the podcast world's version of painful itching and swelling. You know they sell a cream for that, right? It's over the counter. Works really well. I've had to use it a lot. Hello, Ron. Hi, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How about you? Great. Dr. Jeff Werber is uh, practicing uh, veterinary medicine. He's been doing it for over 30 years. Oh, my God. He's one of the few uh, select, a few actively uh, practicing uh, veterinary medical journalists in the U.S. Hey, uh, good to speak to you. Uh, we always like to talk to veterinarians. I always get them confused with vets, and I always say thank you for your service. But thank you for your service anyway. Oh, thank you so much. You know, it's funny. We always say we when when we speak, when we write, um, we always try to use the full word veterinarian yes. because of that. Because say, Wait, are you a car? Are you are you an you know ex army? What, what do you mean that? exactly? Uh, you know, we're we're talking about uh, well, we're talking about pet scratching, and then we're getting into some other things, but. Um, I, I have a dog. Dog is, is scratching constantly, no matter, uh, you know, and I do the monthly free, uh, flea treatment and things like that. Is it normal for a dog to to scratch at itself continually? Well, it's normal for a dog to scratch occasionally. Once it becomes continual, when it becomes, bothers them, when it actually interrupts their regular activities like eating and playing and uh -huh. chasing that ball or they're rubbing and scooting and, you know, chewing on themselves, right. uh, then it's not normal. And, uh, you know, it leads to problems. It's often, especially this time of year, but it can happen all year, yeah. dogs scratch because of allergies. Oh. They don't sneeze. They don't have the runny eyes. They don't oh. have the scratchy throat like we do. They actually scratch. Oh. And they itch. And, and they, as they said, they rub and they chew. So um, it is obviously something to be reckoned with and the more they do it and i'm sure you've seen dogs that have scabs along their back yes, and, yes. and the fleas um and there are many allergens that are affecting them not only the pollens that affect us but it's also things around the house it could be uh. obviously their food it could be house dust it could be house dust mites it could uh. be tobacco smoke okay. um uh, wool and cotton and certain flowers in the house there are so many possible allergens in a dog's environment so it's really important to understand um, when your dog's itching is 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 too much itching, and um, okay. uh, we uh, talk about. I have a great website that I direct pet owners to, uh -huh. and it's called youranimalinstinct.com, all one word. Your Animal Instinct, sponsored by Zoetis, and um, basically within the site you can learn more, learn more about canine allergy, and you can take a quiz. It's called the Itch Instinct Quiz. And what this quiz does, it really will help uh, clarify whether or not your dog's itching is a little too much. And, and if so, it will direct you, of course, to see your veterinarian. Great. And another program 
that um, Zoetis has been sponsoring and is tied in, as you mentioned, to the, the canine itch. Yeah. It's called the Canine Courage Program. What is that? And it's a wonderful program that is providing health care assistance to retired military and police dogs, mm-hmm. as well as to active service dogs assisting veterans suffering from post-traumatic ah. stress syndrome. Wow. So when that quiz is taken, that triggers a donation by Zoetis to this Canine Courage program. Very so cool. it's really a win-win-win. Okay. Um, we're going to be helping our pets. You're going to learn more about your dog's itch, um, helping these service dogs and helping the veterans whom these service dogs are helping. So, um, ah. you know, as I said, it's a, it's, it's a wonderful program. So there is a connection between veterinarians and vets. Absolutely. How do you yeah. like that? Oh, so the, wow. the veterinarians, veterinarians helping the vets. And, uh, and also, more <laughs> importantly, uh, with the completion of the quiz and, and learning more, uh, you will learn more about some um, medications, new medications especially. Because yes. typically in the past, and, and I, as, long as, as well as other veterinarians, have been resorting to, of course, the antibiotics, as you mentioned, to treat the secondary infections yes. associated with this, but also uh, things like corticosteroids, and immunosuppressive agents, and uh, they are effective, but they also um, have side effects, uh, whether it's excessive drinking and excessive urination, liver problems, increased appetite. Um, So um, obviously it's it's, it's a problem, yet yet it's been worth it because we were helping our dogs. Well, now there's a new medication by Zoetis called Apoquil, and it is it is the best. I mean, I hate to talk about a dog allergy, but it's a cat's meow. I mean, it, it, it is not to be used on cats, but it's for dogs. And it is the first medication of its kind that actually attacks the canine itch at its core without the side effects. And wow. honestly, I've had clients call me and have seen results within two hours. Wow. It's unbelievable. It's great. Uh, I, I wish I wish I could take this stuff because I have I, allergies. I know. <laughs> I know. People have asked me, can I, can I take it? Uh, no, it's just for dogs, but it is really effective uh, and safe and without the side effects. Yeah. So, you know, my, my, the way I look at the, 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 uh, the program is between the medication, the, the Apoquil, between the canine, you know, uh, learning more about the canine itch, the itch instinct quiz, youranimalinstinct.com. Um, we are doing so much for our dogs. And okay. for the uh, very special wow. dogs that are helping our veterans. Great. Is, 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 is licking also uh, an allergic uh, kind of reaction like scratching? Because my dog always licks a lot themselves as well. Absolutely. Especially when, they, when they're, they're kind of rolled over and they're licking either yeah. their feet. Yeah. If yeah. they're licking their feet a lot, we often think of food allergy or pollen allergy. Wow. Or they're licking their groin area. Um, and again, that also is going to be pollen allergy. I thought that was so, for, I thought that was for pleasure. Oh yeah, right. Okay. right. <laughs> yeah, that might be too. But uh, <laughs> but I would I would worry about that. And right, then of I course would, the chewing, you know, like too. a dog whips around and starts nibbling at yes, the skin. Yes, 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 uh, yes. That I would look for fleas. I would look for fleas oh, in that one. Oh, right. And I mean, literally, they could be sitting and relaxing. All of a sudden, they turn around like a, a, yeah. a, a, a mile a minute, and yes. they're just going nuts. Okay. All so, right. Yep. Those are the symptoms. Uh, I wish you were my veterinarian, but I don't. You're probably not nearby. You're probably filled up. But anyway, well, you, can come, you can come out to California. We'd love to see you. <laughs> okay. That's <laughs> a little bit of a trip to just to have the, my dog checked out. Anyway. Uh, Okay, give me the, give me some websites where I can get more information when you're not around. Okay, the website is youranimalinstinct.com, and that is the best. Perfect. Thank you so much. Let me ask you one more All thing. All right, thanks, Ron. Thanks, All right. All right. thanks for having me. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> well, we're done. Stick a fork in me. I'm done. I'll be back again tomorrow with a brand new show. That means it'll be different than this one in its content. Until then, put your one shoe on, go out there and conquer the world in some manner, shape, or form. And next time you eat a chicken, think twice, have some empathy. I wish you peace. Peace.